Okay, so on to parameters and refs. As our template stands right now, it's certainly reusable, but not as much as we'd like it to be. And we have some things hard coded in that you know we may want to change depending on who launches our stack. So for example, do we always want our author to be me? Eh, probably not. And what about the SSH range? Do we always want it to be completely open? Eh, probably not. We probably want it constrained to a particular range. Well, parameters are how we can pass our template custom settings on creation. That way the stack that's created for it isn't just limited to whatever you've hard coded in it. So for example, we can make a parameter for author name. And that way when someone launches a template, they can fill it in with their own name. And we'll do the same to the SSH range as well. That way you can use the security group uh, template we've made here and confine it to whatever IP address range that you need. And so this brings us to our second term that's on the, the slide here, refs or references. These are what us, allow us to use parameters throughout our template. We'll see it later, but it's also how we can have resources reference or ref each other. So for example, when we make an instance, you know, how are we going to tell that instance about the security group? Well, we do that with refs. Okay, so this sounds a lot simpler. This is a lot simpler than it sounds. Not not the reverse, but <laughs> let's go ahead and hop right in. So to do the parameters section, we're just going to add a new key called parameters, and I'm actually going to do it just above the resources. And I just like the organization of seeing those first here. So parameters, and remember it is uppercased. Put a little space here and we're just going to make a very simple parameter now the very first key here is going to be the name of your parameter it's going to be the equivalent of its logical id it's going to be how you reference it and i'm going to call it param author name now i always suffix sorry prefix everything with the word param because if you have a number of these and you have them scattered throughout a very long template i like to be able to look at them and know instantly that i'm talking about a parameter and then so the first property that we have here is going to be the type. So the data type, right? The data type of this parameter. Now I've got the documentation open here for parameters and we can just go down the properties and into type. And we can see here, there's a number of properties that we can give a parameter that lets you constrain it to different values. But let's start simply. So for the param author name, what do we want this to be? Well, probably just a string. I love the description here. It's a literal string. <laughs> but uh, this, these are all of the base types that we can use, but specifically these first four. The last two are, are special types that we'll talk about here shortly. So we're gonna just choose the first one, so string. And then we're also going to come up here and let's say, okay, description. We should probably put that in just in case someone's confused as to what that means. And we're just gonna say the owner of the CFN template. And there we go. That's our first <laughs> That's our first parameter. I mean, nothing too crazy. And let's hop back over to the documentation. As you could see, we could do stuff like max length or max value or min length and min value, right? We can even give it a uh, an allowed pattern. You can use a regular expression to enforce a particular type. And then we have the special types here. The AWS specific parameter types and the SSM parameter types. So let's go ahead and touch on these some. These differ from your normal types like number and string and the sense that they have a lot more validation built into them. If you truly want to make sure that a, par a parameter is always an image ID, well, you can use this as a type instead of say a string. Now, if you're operating from the command line interface, you know, that's not really, it's not going to really do anything other than just yell at you if you put in an incorrect format. However, when you use these special types and you launch a template from the console, so for example, if you were to use this one to, for key pairs, so EC2 uh, SSH key pairs, if you were to put this one in here and say like this, then when you launch this template in the console, what it's actually going to do is turn the little field for this parameter into a dropdown of all of the keys that are available to you in that region. So it's really nice for making your parameters more dynamic and also to have them respond to stuff that you've created inside of your account. So that's the first type and there's a number of these in here. Now, the, the list here is if you need to select more than one. So for example, if you have a more than one availability zone that you'd want something in, you could use this instead of just selecting one. 
Now, um, the best way to get a hold of these, honestly, you know, it's just to experiment with them. But if we go through each and every one of them, this video will drag out longer uh, to the point where you'll probably get nuts. Okay, so then there's the SSM parameters uh, types. Now, if you haven't worked with the system manager parameter store, you know, the, it's probably not going to make a, a lot of sense. But what you can do is you can come into EC2 and you can come down here to where is parameters here? Did they finally move it out? They did. Okay, so it is no longer in the EC2 console. So let's find the systems manager. And in the systems manager, they have parameter store. And in parameter store, we see that I have some, some parameters from other things that I teach and just some experimentation of my own. And you can just add secure parameters that are encrypted, or you can just add plain strings and different types of things. Well, using SSM parameter types, you can make it so that your CloudFormation template will automatically pull in these values. And so it's really convenient if, say, that you want to you know, keep an API key or something and you wanna pull that in at the last minute. Now, even though I just used that example, just know there are some problems around using this type if you wanna work with encrypted um, parameters, but we won't go too deep into that. It's also a really good place to use if you want to automatically pull in an Amazon machine image instead of every single time they update them having to, you know, um, recode those values in. All right, so enough on parameters. Uh, that was a kind of a longer aside on some of the more advanced stuff. Let's get back to the simplicity here, a string. So if we wanted to use this, how would we do so? Well, we would use a ref, right? And a ref here, the way you use a ref is when you want to pull the value from a parameter, you go to the properties. So in this case, I'm gonna mess with metadata author here. I want this to be dynamic and respond to this parameter. Well, the first thing you're gonna do is instead of making it a string, is you're gonna up, open up a new object and you're going to make the very first uh, key here, you're gonna make the key the word ref. Now, when you do this, like this, in this format, CloudFormation sees this as a special thing you're doing. It knows that you're not just putting in more arbitrary data inside of the metadata. It knows that, okay, this per they want me to do something with this. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the name or this logical ID of this parameter. And there we go. That's how we would bind it. That is literally all we have to do. When we do this, this is going to, when we launch the template, it's going to give the, the launching user the, the parameter and the option to fill in param author name. And then when the template's done, it's going to have whatever value they put in for the actual author metadata property. Okay, so ref, referencing our parameter. What is a ref aside from what I just told you? Well, ref is one of these type of special functions. This is part another one of those special syntax that CloudFormation puts in here. And I have the documentation open and you'll see on the side here, we're in an area called intrinsic functions. And here it just tells you, it just says ref returns the value of a specified parameter or resource because it can be either. We can reference things from our parameter section or we can reference things from our resources section. But either way, when we ref something, it has to be the logical name or the logical ID of either the parameter or the resource. Now, we'll get into intrinsic functions a little bit more later, but this is how they all work. So you see all sorts of different functions that we can use here, but they all work the same way. When you want a value that's going to be evaluated by one of these special functions, instead of just putting in the value, like the security group, you open up an object, and then that first key is the function, right? So in this case, we wanted to use ref, but if we wanted to use, say, join or select, we would just, instead of ref, we would put in function join and AWS would know that, okay, well, whatever they said is the property, that is what they want us to put through the function itself. But we're just going to stick with that. And then, so the value, right? So is the, what you wanted to operate in on, that is the parameter that you pass to the function. So you put your function as the key, and then you put what you wanted to operate on as the value. And when this template is run through cloud formation, it evaluates it based on what you passed it. And in this case, that is just putting whatever we put in for param author name as the author. Okay. So now let's deal with the IP range right now. 
whenever we up this security group, it is always opening SSH traffic to everywhere. And I don't think we necessarily want that. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but if we want the option to constrain it, you know, then we should at least give our, our users of this template that option. So I'm gonna make a new parameter called param allow SSH from range, and you can name that whatever you want, but that's just what I'm naming it. It's going to be a type with capital T of string. And for description, we're just gonna put IP cider block to allow SSH access from, there we go. And then we're gonna add one more property here. We're gonna add a default. So just in case you don't want to, to, to think about what you're gonna put in, or maybe you don't understand cider blocks, um, we're gonna put a default value. And the way we do that is adding this property called default, and then putting whatever it is that we want inside of that. So we're gonna add this property default, and we're going to make the default, well, just what we had down here. In fact, I'm gonna just cut this and put it right up here. And there's our second parameter. Now, to use it, it's the exact same format as this. Down here, we want to use this intrinsic function known as ref. So instead of a value, we're going to open up an object and we're going to use as the key ref telling CloudFormation, all right, that is the intrinsic function we want to use. And then we are going to reference our param allow SSH from range. We'll put that in there. And with that done, now when this template is launched, we'll have another parameter for to put in whatever as a IP cider block range that we want. And when it's done evaluating, instead of this object being here, it'll be whatever's been typed in. And if nothing's been typed in, well, the default value will be populated there instead. Now, the parameters don't really make sense until you get to see them in action, until you get to actually use them. And so now that our template and security group is at a state to where we can actually launch it, that's what we're gonna do next.